Well, the one good start? part about that whole show. <laughs> did we start in the compound? We did. We did. Yeah. I think we start with a briefing, right? Uh. Deciding uh, which of the uh, three places we were going, which I, uh, obviously we weren't going to the. No, I feel like we had something else. Oh, we talked to Donner. Oh, yeah. Jericho okay. pulled uh, Clint aside and we went to go talk to Donner and we decided to, to pin the blame on a person that is no longer with us in theory. Wink, wink. Yeah, wink, wink. Uh, during that time, Clint revealed <laughs> to the two of them that I did message Leona and she said no thanks. To which Donner, I, I marked this as a fucking win. He chuckled. He fucking chuckled at how stupid Clint was. But that's a win. I got him to laugh. He chuckled and he's he asked, "Are we sure you're you're acting not the traitor?" <laughs> Big place. Uh, but yeah, we debriefed on uh, pinning Caster as the scapegoat, as well as uh, basically what what this is going to all shake out to. Um, the commander did introduce us to uh, the con. No, I think he talked about the hunter killers before, but I think he gave us a bit more of a debrief on what they do and who they are, just because we talked about who would probably get sent after the scapegoat logically, and those would probably be the hunter killers. I think he said they are two watchmen as a whole, as a white watch are to normal people. But uh, after that, we went to our uh, di- oh wait, no, Jericho and Quinn talked a bit more about uh, false memories of Louisville. To what Quinn was like, Quinn was like, yeah, fuck that shit. Mm-hmm. Home is where your heart is. And then uh, we de- we went to the formal debriefing. Um, basically designating who's going to where. Our underclass, we're going to the sovereign section. We'll take up the middle section. And Donner and his crew will be taking our northern section. I believe is how it shook out, too. And then we, we, we set out. Pretty quick, clean, and simple. And, you know, when we got there, honestly, the operation was pretty smooth. Pretty, pretty smooth. Uh, these are summer Type 2s, even though they are F-tier, they still were plenty able to pack a wall up if they managed to get the right hits in. Uh, a lot of crits were thrown around, if I remember correctly. Mostly from us, but I think they got a couple as well. I remember that one Chad uh, zombie guy, which we were like, if he lives, he's getting promoted. He did not live, unfortunately. Uh, Riker did comment that there was a section where uh, he thought there'd be more, and then he just popped a miss cloud, and then we found out um, later, midway in the fight, that he was fighting with like like nine of his sh- uh, miss clones in the middle of it. Cheeky, and cheeky the one that was Riker. sitting over there was actually just a clone anyways? <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Just John. Uh, we did have one of the spawns of Grox? Grox? Mm-hmm. Grox? One of the spawns of... But not oh, the side. Yeah. One of the spawns of Grox show up in which it Lucian got actually like, fucking no. bullied because Lucian just banished it twice and then we jumped it every time it came back from being banished. Lucian was tired of their bullshit and they didn't even do anything yet. And then fucking the, the big undead biomass got like pinned five different ways. It got its ankle <laughs> slash, pin shot, speed slow, the whole kit and caboodle. The two big threats on the field were probably the most bullied on the field. <laughs> Which was pretty hilarious. Uh, we also, uh, through Quint's quote-unquote familiar, got a glimpse at uh, what the uh, the sovereign section was like, and we got to see Maven's T... That was his T... Two. two. That was a T2. Yeah, T1 was the one we saw on the teleport. Where he made a blade graveyard. And uh, just so, so fucking cool. His actual blade wasn't in any of it, but he would just pick up a different weapon amidst the hundreds that were scattered around there and just go to town. We did spot one. It was a scythe, which had a weird green, pale green glow about it that stood out amongst all of the milky white uh, golden blades over there. Uh, the Strix Blade does show up at the end of his T2, right? He had a, what, like a meteor I guess strike. It's tier 3, isn't it? Correct. 
Mm-hmm. Fucking yeah. dope. So the underclass were well were in safe hands with Carolyn and Gregor. Uh, they were using uh, Gregor and Michael and Maven as like their their frontliners. Uh, Quentin did his work on trapping up the fucking place. Uh, so that was that. Uh, meanwhile, to the north, there weren't any threats at all because there was uh, some sword point diplomacy with Erica and Watchman Klein being inquired upon, we'll call it, uh, to see if they would join on with us. Uh, we eventually regrouped with our underclassmen and then uh, went to the northern section. And there, Captain Maven, Ca- Captain Riker, and Commander Donner sort of laid out the ultimate ultimatum to everyone present. You either join or you don't, but if you don't, we request that you give us six months to to show that we are like true to our word before you do anything before you snitch on us essentially. Uh so far we don't have we will have one confirmed no, which is ward. We have a lot of tentatives and we have a number of yeses, particularly our upper class. Klein is in a state of uh, contemplation. I believe Ezekiel is talking with John and Marbrook. Yep, there they are. Erica said yes, but who knows what she actually meant. And uh, we debriefed with Zoe and Grimwald, Lucian did, and they seemed very fast yeses because they want to get they want to uh, get some vengeance. Uh, so when their fellow underclassmen saw how fast they were to be a yes, Jax, you know, sort of called them over, and I guess they're sort of picking their brains on it right now in this rock huddle over here. And I think that's it. Uh, Clint did mention to Briggy and Doran that he does that he didn't think Caster was dead in the first place, but now he doubly doesn't think Caster is dead. So currently, we're all uh, squatted up here in the northern section in the swamps between Chrysantine and the Chrysantine Hold with no rings. All sneaky deaky like. And I think that's it. See, yeah, that seems like it. Feels like right. weird not having music. <laughs> it does, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I gotta turn it on. I said turn it up a bit. So as you, as we, you know, come back to it, you do see there's a, the quiet stillness of the area, pervasive, as throughout large battles, the swamp has gone relatively silent, and just mild chattering between the individuals present. What do y'all do? I have something, but I open the floor to anyone else. Um, I think I'm gonna kind of low profile stalk around to see if I can overhear any dissenting or see any dissenting like looks or or dialogue or what have you, just to, to try and get a gauge of uh, who is and isn't on board and who might need to. I'm talk talking. Or executed. So could I and, basically roll an insight to see if uh, there's... Uh, is anyone... Does everyone have their gear on? Like their helmets on? Some people have taken theirs off now that it's nice and quiet. I would like to use my observant trait. <laughs> ah! Oh, to read lips. That's actually yeah. quite clever. <laughs> that's Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, so Jericho over here. Um, well, Jericho and you do hear the three of them talking about, you know, what class was like back in the day. And uh, oh, Klein guys. specifically saying how odd this is. And surely you have to see that, right? Whereas. Wombat is a little disoriented and not really expecting it. But, given all they've seen, they can't put their trust in the captains that 
got them so far, who can they? Does that seem to, I guess, assuage his fears or convince him at all? Uh, roll an insight. Okay. I did give everyone a bardic. Thank uh, you. Last session. So every it lasts ten minutes. I don't know how long it's been. You have. So. I'm gonna play my own background music. This is so cool. Yeah, I know. It's scary. <laughs> it's uh, super liminal. Uh, right? One. And then uh, I'm, I'll go ahead and use my, my cat's eyes. I'll hold into the bardic for. You know what? No, the bardic is only less than 10 minutes, so I'll do a d8 um, to make it. Uh, this is a pain. Hey, it's a clean <laughs> bardic. Sorry, bud. I appreciate your uh, memory to d8, though. So it, it really looks like he isn't a person who makes any decision offhand and is just sort of contemplating what that future looks like. Okay. And, uh, I guess you would overhear him saying, even if it is true, is this the only way to fix it? Over here, then, as I walk over here. Uh, do I hear any immediate response, actually, from Wombat or Seb? I think you'd hear Seven say something to the effect of, if you had absolute power, what would it take for you to step down? <laughs> That's a good answer. Lucian, however, reading all these unhelmeted underclass here. I guess you could also read John. Ooh. Fun. Uh, so who do you focus on first? Uh, I don't know John like that. I'm going to look at our lower class to see what's happening. Okay. Uh, I that right, you see. Mm -hmm. I'm going to mark these up for you to uh -oh. make it simpler. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, no. I, I can't say I'm surprised at that. Oh, oh green for, ja uh, for Jax, but red for Mule. Interesting. Ooh. And Michael, notably not saying anything. Um, of course. I will say what you do here is, oh, as they're discussing, um, Zoe does look over to Jax and say, if you were going to agree with me in the first place, why even stop me? To which she responds, because we still should trust each other and talk it out. Someone may have a better point that we're missing. Oh, is that being reckless and rash? I kind of nod my head in approval at Jax at this point. I mean, he probably doesn't know. But that's, yeah, that's very diplomatic. Wasn't expecting that. Okay. Uh, you hear Calliope say, with everything we know that's happening, isn't there more isn't there more pressing priorities? Even a bad watchman can still kill a dark one. And we're about to have a whole swarm of them coming out the sea. Hmm. Who's free to talk right now? I'm gonna scope my way over to over to Bradford, sure. and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let, I'm just gonna like relay what I'm uh, basically seeing from the group Go over ahead, here. Uh, uh, I yeah, think yeah. the last one you would hear before they, you know, deliberate further is mm -hmm. Channing saying, 
all we're going to do is create more people filling that vacuum. Doesn't mean the person who fills the next is going to be any different. Just trading one tyrant for another. That makes sense for Channing. I don't know why. No. Okay. All right, Bradford. You hear all that? <laughs> uh, is Jericho there to also hear that? Because I feel yes. you can do more with that than I can. Okay, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I don't Trading know what to do in this at all. <laughs> and they're not wrong. Yes, they are. If you <laughs> get rid of one tyrant, maybe another tyrant will stay, will step up. But if you don't get rid of that tyrant, then you just have a tyrant. <sighs> I guess Kids. you're optimistic. That's that's all I have to say. I mean, I understand the, you know, the pessimism in him. If you want, you can talk to them. He needs more hope. Uh, he said, Channing is a no. Who Channing's else? a no. Calliope, Naya, and uh, Mew. <laughs> Michael hasn't said anything. I, I don't know, what accent am I slipping into? <laughs> Um, uh, Naya, uh, Michael hasn't said anything, so I have no idea. He's totally quiet. Alright. Let's the others. Uh, have you spoken with Quentin yet? Um, all I know is that he's going to be hard to convince. At least from what I've heard from Zoe and Grimwald. This, but this probably surprising. Flora, she seems to get through him the most. Yeah! Yeah. And, uh... I'll go tell Quint, uh, tell Clint this. I have a feeling he wants as many yeses as possible. Mm. Yeah, more yeses means he probably is likely to stay. Yeah. Saturday, you, you gotta talk to Erica. Make sure she's still in the upper up. I mean, Erica seems like she's made up her mind. He just doesn't well, shake a hand of. Uh, eh? he, well, really, he, oh, he just can't really tell. An excuse to talk to the oh, true. Yeah, go go say hi. Yeah, and lead her away from her, please. And, uh, I'll start walking up towards Clint. Um. Katie, you said on that note. Yeah, what you doing, Flora? What's the note? What's in the box? <laughs> What's, in the the <laughs> What's in the um, I feel like they're having like personal class time over there. But if I, I'm just gonna try to catch the eye of either. Is Quentin over there? Am I losing my oh, mind? Oh no, he's over here. He's on the bottom right. right. He's he's, he's oh, specifically away from his class. <laughs> oh, just kidding. In that perfect. case, perfect. I'm just gonna settle up to him. Yeah. Yeah. Long time no see. Oh yeah, good to see you back. Well, what's training then? Going. Learn some new things, train with some new people, you know, bringing in the specialist and all that. Mm. How, uh, how are you feeling about all this? About that? Oh. Yeah, I don't really want to hear what they have to say. No, I meant with your opinion of it. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's like, what's the what's the Grand Watcher ever done to you? You know. I'm sort of surprised to hear you say that. I didn't. Uh, 
well, you don't strike me as exactly the biggest fan of top brass. And no, absolutely authority. fucking not. No. But there's always going to be some asshole out there. At least this asshole is a quiet one. You don't worry about... I don't know. What? Future all that? I mean... Hey, big sis, look at... I'm looking at trying to survive this year. Maybe even the trip back. The, f the fuck I know about fighting a Grand Watcher. You know? Fighting some elite troops of White Watch. I'm a, I'm a boy with some knives. I'm a girl with a crossbow, but... I think it's pretty deadly, so... Just, um... I don't know. It's good to believe in something, you know what I mean? This is all... Do what you're told and follow the rules and try to survive. Yeah, I, I, do, I hear you. But, you know, last time I believed in something, it started ripping itself apart. What are you going to do? You know, that phrase, uh... Better the devil you know than the devil you don't. I don't, um... I don't believe in that. So, if it's just some different asshole... Who's the same as this asshole, or is different in a different way... That's not... An inevitability, that's not an absolute certain... But it is true that this guy sucks. And that I do know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. My brother. No, I, I, I hear you. For sure. And it's like... These two fucking captains of ours over here. Paragons of morality and stuff. It's like, how do you not like them, right? Everyone's a paragon of morality. Everyone's a person. Everyone makes mistakes. But when you choose corruption and evil, I don't know. Maybe the next guy will suck just as bad, but you can try, right? Otherwise, we might as well just walk out there and be done with it now. Nah, I couldn't do that to Cal. <sighs> Fine. You got me in your little death squad. Fuck though, if I die out there, if I get butchered, I'm 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 coming I'll haunt you. I'll do it. If you die out there or get butchered. It's because I'm already dead. Oh shit. Besides, I'd rather have you in my death squad than there. Alright. I'll hold you to it. I like, you don't go dying either. Uh, I'll sort of punch him on the shoulder and wander off. Yeah, a roll of perception is you leave. Oh no. Mm -hmm. 
you just see him sort of lean down and take his knife and start carving at the root as he just says, what the f*** have you gotten yourself into now? Bradford do anything? Um. Uh, you know, does anybody else? Anybody have anything else? <laughs> I got something. Okay, cool. Do that. Lucian was wanting to uh, observe these two. Oh, John and uh. Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel, thank you. I kept wanting to say Uriel. <laughs> <laughs> no, we lost him. Yeah. You, so, Ezekiel, less hard. I mean, you can roll a perception, because you might be able to just hear him from there throughout the noises. It's not bad, 20. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Uh, you, uh, you hear John just say, we're a little bit old to be overthrowing empires, don't you think? To which Ezekiel responds with, We're a little bit too young to be given up already, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> Damn, okay. I, I like the, like, bro talk that happening. Wait, wait, so, wait, John said that, right? Not Ezekiel? Ezekiel's with us, John's with, or not with us yet. Oh, okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Nice with us. <laughs> John's with us. line like that. <laughs> <laughs> They'll both be with us. <laughs> They'll both be with us. Just give us a little bit longer. Yeah. You hear John say, well, sure as hell can't leave all this work to the kids. Yes! Yes, you're yeah, <laughs> Green dot, green dot! <laughs> green dot, let's go, green dot! Uh... He's trying to fuck Okay, uh, I don't think I need to listen to any more to them, so I think we're good. Is Michael listening in on the their conversation, or is he just kind of spacing out right now? He seems to be kind of sitting on the edge of the rock, just sort of looking at the gray sky above. Hmm. Okay. Does it's anyone want to need, need a, like a, a refresher? Refresher, not refresher. <laughs> <Good Lord. laughs> you want to refresher up, up north towards Lake Mary, sorry, oh. <laughs> yeah, as you as you do look up, no matter where you are, it's just a gray sky. And the city of light that grays a little bit further off, but it's still just gray skies above. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Y'all can do your thing first. I eventually want to talk to Michael, but y'all can do your thing. <laughs> well, I'll talk to Dorian and Brigitte. Yeah, go ahead. Quint will hurriedly walk up the, this was probably like 10 minutes ago, hurriedly walk up the hill. Doran, I just got uh unfortunate realization. Mind doing me a favor? 